<clears throat> Good morning. Hope everybody that listens is keeping well. I wanted to share some of my crazy thoughts about individuality. There aren't many defending individuality, so I think it's important, individuality. Um, we are all individuals, after all. Individuality is linked to privacy. Individuality is linked to private property. Individuality is linked to freedom, freedom of speech and freedom of in religion. So it's very important to uh, emphasize, educate and protect individuality because there's dark forces out there that want to destroy it. We are all individuals and we look to this world through our individual lenses. Our upbringing has a huge impact in the way these lenses operate. So we must be careful. We must not let our bias. We must not let our... Um, uh, what's the expression? Um, tra uh, traumas. We must not let our traumas cloud the trauma of growing up. We must not let our traumas and our bias cloud what's beautiful, cloud what's truthful, what's justice, what's love and uh, reciprocity. We must not let our upbringing cloud these principles because these principles are part of the natural order of things and if you go against the natural order you will pay a price. Evil emanates from this, actually, when you go against the natural order of things. Often people say, but evil uh, only exists when it's actualized. Because if a person is ignorant of what they are doing, then it couldn't be considered evil. It's almost like some people talk of sin. It becomes a sin when you are conscious of it. Because if you're doing it and you don't realize it's bad what you're doing, then it's not really a sin, is it? So evil, the true evil, is when you are in love with evil, meaning you are conscious of it, but still you keep doing it. That's true evil. Evil likes to keep what's ugly alive, for instance. What's ugly is what the natural order of things tries to eradicate. So evil goes against the natural order. Beauty, love, justice are objective. Even babies who haven't been corrupted by the world can distinguish these. Everything that is beautiful is that way because it's in harmony with natural order and it's in harmony with the one. <clears throat> so what is this one that I'm talking about? The one is the coming together of opposing forces. The cooperation between opposing forces. The coming together becomes one. It's the, um, what the philosophers and the thinkers of the past um, came uh, conscious about. They, it's, there's nothing else to discuss, actually. They always talk about the, these principles, the coming together of these opposing forces, and the cooperation between opposites gives birth to everything we see. Everything around us, this world, everything, is a dance, a cooperation between opposite forces. <clears throat> I'm going to read to try better explain this. I'm going to read from someone who's a lot smarter than me. So it's about the one. So long as he 
is one, they cannot overcome him. But as one, he cannot bring his creatures to life and must divide himself. We are repeatedly told, indeed, that he, the Prajapati, desired to be many, and so, as it seems to us, it is quite disinterestedly, but it's not quite disinterestedly, but with ends not yet attained, and with a few to enjoying the objects of the senses that is set us on going. But this is a dangerous enterprise, for being there experienced, he is carried away by the flood of the qualities of the primary matter with which he operates. And as the corporeal elemental self, knowing subject over against ostensibly external objects of perception and compositive of all desires, he is bemused. He is bemused and does not see the bountiful giver of being and actuator within us, but conceives that this is I and that is mine, and therewith binds himself by himself like a bird in a net. And so he wanders around in wombs, both oddly and naughty, overcome by the fruits of his actions and by the pairs of opposites. <clears throat> so this one desired to be many, and he d d divided himself. He animated this everything that we see, animated the world. But uh, by doing so, he kind of became diluted. He became diluted and often he gets lost uh, in the qualities of matter. We call this uh, materialism. When people become obsessed with materialism, they are distancing themselves from the one. You know? So materialism is not... Uh, is not um, in harmony, should I say, with the one. So I'm going to read another segment. Similarly, Plotinus, the ordering and governing principle, the principle is twofold. One that we call the demiurge and one the soul of all. We speak of Zeus sometimes as the demiurge, the creator, and sometimes as the leader of all. So, <clears throat> we uh, mistaken the two principles. Sometimes they are uh, interchangeable. <clears throat> sometimes people use it interchangeably, but uh, which can cause confusion. One principle, the demiurge, the creator, the Zeus, and sometimes as the leader of all. But we are actually talking about the, um, the soul, right? We're talking about the soul and the physicality. The demiurge is the physical world and the soul is the spiritual world. And it's the consubstantiality between these two that gives origin to this world. But sometimes, you know, in their ignorance, people mistaken the demiurge for the creator. Demiurge is the physical. And sometimes they call him the creator of all. <clears throat> Which is as much as to say uh, that we speak of Varuna sometimes as much uh, and sometimes as Mithra. This is different names from different cultures about the same concept. Mithra, the Demiurge, Zeus, it's the same, the same creature, the same principle. Brahma, etc. Um, 
In the same way, in putting two contrasted natures to one and same and same essence. Again, is they are trying to pass the, the idea that you had need two contrasting natures, right? The cooperation between opposites that create everything that we see, create this harmony. <clears throat> So anyway, I kind of got lost. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Demiurge is um, often associated with the soul, the, the solar god, the, the soul, the sun, right? It's the female principle, actually. Um, Zeus and uh, Aphrodite are the same character. They all represent the same principle. Often they used to depict them as hermaphrodite because they, they were like, it's a girl, it's a, it's a boy. No, no, it's the principle. Yeah, but let's just make a statue, you know, a, a iconoclastic, you know, uh, depiction of the, as an hermaphrodite. And let's stop with, because this concept of the one is neither man nor female nor neutral. It's neither of those, but uh, sometimes, you know, to explain these concepts, we have to use these archetypes or, you know, principles. <clears throat> because uh, the principle is the essence of things, right? And often people can't really perceive the essence of things. Uh, the attributes uh, is what they do. You know, it's the, the side effects. But often people can't see the essence in things. And the, uh, the immortal soul is, um, the soul of all is associated with the male principle, is associated with the moon. So the sun is female and the moon is masculine. That's how... Um, you know, in order to explain this, and it's um, you know, I have to use these these types of language. So, it's the sun and the moon. It's the consubstantiality between the sun and the moon that gives birth to life on Earth, so to speak. <clears throat> if that makes any sense, you know. <sighs> so. 